Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, let me make this announcement. On the 1st of April, now today is the 30th day of April. Now, on the 1st of April, we are going to be having our 24 hours fast and then we are going to be praying we are going to be praying according to the watches. Now, if you've never been a part of this prayer meeting, I want you to prepare for this one. Now, we have at every watch, 12 midnight, we normally pray for 30 to 40 minutes at every watch. Now, I understand some of you have jobs to go to or, you know, stuff. This thing, just, just hook up. Praise God. Look for a way to hook up. And, and let's have a wonderful time. This month of April is very important. Because I hear the Lord say, use the month of April to prepare for the glory that's coming in the month of May. So uh, during that, that prayer meeting on the 1st, I'm going to be sharing you know, a lot of things with you. Now the Zoom um, ID is on the screen. I want you to join us wherever you are. It doesn't matter your time zone. But of course, you have to follow our time zone. Praise God. We are using a West African time. So you, you, you find that out so you can join us in at those watches when we pray. Where the first minute is going to start at 12 midnight of the 31st, breaking into the first. Do you understand that? Then the second meeting will be at 3 a.m. And then we're going to have a meeting at 6 a.m. And then 9 a.m. And 12 noon, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., 9 p.m. And which is the last watch, but we're going to close the meeting with the final because we're fasting for 24 hours. We're going to close the meeting uh, with a final meeting at 11:30. Praise God, 11:30 p.m. I don't want you to miss this. Set an alarm with your phone. Mark the date. Don't miss this particular one. Praise God. Let's pray, Father. We bless you. Today is a great day. And you have set things in place to do us good. Lord, we bless you. Thank you because burdens are being lifted right now and yokes are being destroyed in the life of everyone watching and listening. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I want to take time out to appreciate every one of you who share these messages. Now I get testimonies from, from, from many people. So I share your message with someone and this is the feedback I got. Now thank you. You are partners together with me in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I bless you today. The Lord will ensure that your portion is maintained in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen. You know, you know, I, you know someone told me, look, I translate the video into audio you know, to send so that people with low, lower data can use. I'm like, wonderful, praise God. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. All right. So we are, we are talking about fulfilling prophecies. And, and we, we, I read something to you yesterday from the book of Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10. And let me just go straight to the point here. He says, when, you know, I told you, yes, I described this man and I told you he's not an angel. It wasn't an angel that was talking to John. And then he says, for the testimony. Well, let me just read quickly. He says, and I, fell at, and I fell at his feet, John speaking now, to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. So this man boasted and said, I have the testimony of Jesus. And then he goes on to say, Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Powerful statement there. Powerful statement. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You remember what Jesus said. Jesus made a very powerful statement while he walked the earth. He says, look, don't think that I have come, I have not come to destroy the law. 
He says, I have come to what? Fulfill it. Now, what does it mean to fulfill the law? See, people don't understand. To fulfill means to show the reason. See, to show the reason for something. To show that this thing was right. So if, if, if God says, if the law says, thou shalt not kill. Jesus said, I'm here to explain to you. My life will show you the wisdom in that statement. So now, what does it mean to fulfill? When something is fulfilled, you know, you know what your reaction is going to be? Your reaction is going to be, mm, 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 mm. now I see. See? When something is fulfilled, when something gets to its close, when something gets to an end, what do you do? Say, oh, yeah, now I see. Praise God. So when Jesus said, I am come to fulfill the law, that's what he's saying. He said, the life I would live will make you look at the law I said, oh, I get it now, <laughs> praise God. And guess what? It's not only Jesus that was called to fulfill the law. We are the extension of Jesus. And remember what Jesus says, it's still heaven and earth pass. Not one dot or title of the law will go without being fulfilled. Look at statements like this and ponder on it. Jesus said, I have come to fulfill the law. All right? And then he says, till heaven and earth pass, all the law. He says, even the dot and it is meaning, ah, this, is, this is amazing. Meaning, <laughs> everything that came through the law will be fulfilled. He didn't say abolished. He said fulfilled. Now, people misunderstand these things. And you know, you have this um, new creation or New Testament preachers who, who sound, he has, he has abolished the law. <laughs> he didn't say he abolished the law. What Colossians told us that he abolished the handwriting that was written against us, which were contrary to us. For the Lord Jesus said, it will all be fulfilled. Now, you need to understand these things. So, when Jesus said it will all be fulfilled, and Jesus just lived three and a half years, do you think Jesus fulfilled all of it? No. See, in, in, in Isaiah chapter 53, it says, when he makes an offering, when he makes his soul an offering for sin, he says, for he will see his seed, his seed shall prolong his days. Now, what's he say? When, when he offers up Jesus to die, the confidence that will make him offer Jesus to die is because he will see us who are the seed. We will prolong his days. Are you getting me now? So, how do we prolong his days? We are now those that are prolonging the days of Jesus, fulfilling every scripture, fulfilling every law that was given. Now, that's why it says the spirit of the, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I told you yesterday, it's actually prophecy fulfillment. See? So, when, when, when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, wh whoever you are, wherever you are, when the Holy Spirit begins to speak to you, when you begin to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, you are already selected as a candidate for prophecy fulfillment. Because there is no word the Holy Spirit is going to give you that is out of God's word. The Holy Spirit is not going to tell you anything new. Hear me? Jesus said the Holy Spirit will not testify of himself. Jesus said the Holy Spirit will take that which is of mine and he shall reveal it to you. Meaning, the Holy Spirit is not coming to give you his own ideas. The Holy Spirit is coming to give you the ideas of Jesus. He's coming to tell you what Jesus has already said. He's coming to tell you what Jesus has written. Now, that's why Jesus taught us to pray that prayer that we call the Lord's Prayer. And then he says, the will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, one time I was praying, you know, and then the Spirit opened my understanding to that. He said, hey, do you know what, what Jesus meant by that? And he said, listen, 
when he says the will of God be done on as it is in heaven, he is saying, let the will of God be done on and as it is written in heaven. Because what you have in heaven are scripts, writings of God. Praise God. And the Holy Spirit is here on earth to see to it that there is a fulfillment of everything God has said, everything God has written concerning us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible said in the book of Revelation that books will be open. What books do you think will be open? See, do you think, you think angels are busy jotting down every action of yours? You think angels, they are carrying books and following you every day. Today, he told a lie. On the, on the 27th of March, Mr. John told one lie. This is the lie. And they write it down. And then they will follow you again. Think that's what angels are doing? No, 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 no. When the Bible says books will be opened, it is the books that God has written. The book of Malachi tells us that there is a book of remembrance that God writes. But he says, those who love the Lord spoke often one with another. And the book of remembrance was written concerning them that love the Lord. Praise God. What is that? The things that God has planned for you. That is what is written in his books. So why will it be open on the judgment day? It will be open to check how many you fulfilled. So all the great things that God has written concerning you is in his books. So on that day, he's going to open them. Hey, you are supposed to be the chairman of a conglomerate that was supposed to bring so much blessings on the earth in this area and in that area. And, and then you see it written down. And I pray this is not your, your portion in the name of the Lord Jesus. That you see those things and say, hey, what happened to me? No, no, that will not be your portion. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, your portion shall be. He will call you and they will open the books and you will see and you will look at yourself. Oh, wow, yeah, I am one with the things that are written concerning me. You know what that means? I fulfilled all that was written concerning me. That's why you must take that prayer very seriously. Jesus said, the will of God be done on earth. Pray it every day. You know, I hear some people say, don't, don't pray the Lord's prayer. It's, it's an Old Testament prayer. Hey, don't listen to them. I'm telling you the truth. Don't listen to them. They are cheating you of God's blessings. See that statement? The will of God be done on earth as it is written in heaven. Now, when you pray that prayer, you know what you're doing? You are inviting the Holy Spirit to bring to you the spirit of prophecy. And what is that? The testimony of Jesus. So when I begin to pray that prayer with consciousness every day, Father, as I step out today, and I wake up in the morning, I say, Father, thank you for a beautiful day. Today, Lord, your will is being done in my life. As it is written in heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you for the ministry of angels around me today. And I pray that prayer. I have just invited the Holy Spirit in. To take charge of my day. And guess what? And as I'm going on. I hear him tell me. Hey. I'm going to do this in your life. Oh. <laughs> you know sometimes he wants you to tell you some things. And you look at yourself. And look at the things he has said. You say me? <laughs> you know. He, you want to act like Zachariah. When the angel told him that, look, your prayer has been answered. Your wife will conceive. He thought about his wife, how old she was. And thought about himself. His angel, what year are you? <laughs> what year are you? Do you know how old we are? See, because he, he couldn't marry the two. We are old. <laughs> he should have come 30 years ago. We are old. And guess what? Hey. What is hard for God to do? Praise God. What is hard? Who made the body? Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. So, so when you pray that prayer, the Holy Spirit begins. You invite him. You've told him, come into my day. Visit me. How will he visit you? I've told you this one many times that the manifestation of the presence of God in your life or the evidence of God's presence in your life is when you can hear his voice. God's presence in your life not to be making you shake and be falling everywhere. It is that voice that comes to you. Praise God. Our time is up. 
Listen, step out today to fulfill the things that have been written concerning you for today. Receive the grace to fulfill prophecies. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.